we have placed all microphones on mute. Post the presentation, we will welcome questions. These questions can be typed in the Q&A panel available to you, which will be read out to the management on completion of the presentation. A gentle reminder to kindly identify your organization and name while posting questions. I would now like to invite Mr. Sethian Shah from Edelweiss Financial Services Limited to initiate the proceedings. Over to you, sir. Hey, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to all of you on the you know, for the broker and analyst meet of Tarsens Product Limited. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank all of you on behalf of the company and the lead managers for taking your precious time out to attend this meet. Uh, in a market, you know, which would have otherwise been dominated, uh, which has otherwise been dominated by global players, it's just, it's been very heartening to see an Indian company, uh, which started with humble beginnings, you know, way back in mid 80s, uh, to gradually emerge as, uh, you know, a market leader, uh, you know, in the Indian labware market and becoming a trusted partner, a varied segment of customers, uh, you know, across the pharmaceutical and diagnostic company chain. Uh, and I think kudos to that uh, for the management for getting the company where they are today. Uh, from a company perspective, Tarsen is a leading Indian labware company engaged in the designing, development, manufacturing and marketing of consumables and reusables, including benchtop equipment. It is amongst the top three labware manufacturing companies in India with a market share of 9 to 12% in the labware market in the year 2020. The company operates through five manufacturing facilities located in West Bengal, which are vertically integrated and equipped with automated support systems that help maintain quality, increase productivity and reduce costs. The management team under the leadership of Sanjeev Segal and Rohan Segal have built a very strong foundation. The company today boasts of a diversified product portfolio with 1700 plus SKUs across 300 products. Not and not just as a strong market share in India, but is also one of the few players in India to have global reach supplying products to over 40 countries. Company has strong, long-standing customer relationships and its key customer base includes across research organizations, academia institutes, pharmaceutical companies, contract research organizations, diagnostic companies and hospitals. Uh, company has some very, very strong financial profile with more than 70% gross margins and 30% around 30% PAT margins. Superior return ratios, which have been more than 30%, both on ROC and ROE front. Uh, they've got a very able partner, an ADB partner, who has been, you know, uh, strong allies to the company and have helped in taking the company forward to the next level. With significant experience in the labware industry, designed to deliver capabilities, strong brand recognition, long-standing customer relationships, and support from the ADB team, we believe that Tarsens will be a key beneficiary in the times to come especially when the investments towards advanced research is significantly increasing. In fact, we believe that this issue opens up a different dimension for investors who are looking to play healthcare sector in India, you know, a sector which was largely restricted only to hospitals, pharmaceutical and diagnostic chains. This is a very interesting opportunity uh, within the healthcare space. With respect to some issue highlights, the issue, the IPO opens for subscription on Monday, 15th of November closes on Wednesday, November 17th, and the anchor is scheduled for this Friday, which is the 12th of November. The IPO consists of a fresh issue of up to 150 crores and an offer for sale of up to 874 crores at the upper end of the price band. The price band for the issue is between INR 635 and INR 662, which results in an issue size of INR 1023 crores at the upper end. Uh, with this, I'd like to seek your support to make this issue a successful one. And I'd like to invite the management to share their vision and take us through the presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I would now like to call upon the management of Tarsons Products Limited to take us through the company, its journey and the investor presentation. Over to you, Rohan, sir. Good evening, everybody, uh, and thank you for your time today. Uh, so I will start with the presentation. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a brief overview of the company. I think uh, Satyan has given a very, very uh, good brief overview of the company. Uh, I would just like to highlight out here uh, some of the key financials from our last financial year in FY21 and some key customers spread across customer segments and certain key uh, international customers on the bottom. Uh, next slide, please. 
So this is the major events and milestones of the company. We uh, uh, started the company in 1983. It was started at that time by Sanjeev Segal, who's the founder, chairman, and managing director of the company. He has been involved with the company ever since, and today looks after uh, new projects uh, and manufacturing areas of the company. Prior to starting Tarsons, he was a part of the family business since 1977, which manufactured rollers and pinions for the mechanical heater industry. The technology shifted to electronic heaters, and the family was, uh, uh, you know, out of business. The technology was made redundant. That's how uh, Tarsons began. Uh, he, since he met one of his researcher friends who showed him an append of microtube, the idea of Tarsons was conceived and Tarsons was founded. The beginning was very, very difficult. It was like moving against the wind. There was a lot of struggle over a period of 12 to 15 years because the addressable market was too small. There were technology barriers to build products at par with global multinational standards. And the Indian scientific research community was not accepting for, uh, not, did not accept indigenous Indian brands. They were more focused to buy from European American brands and some Japanese brands. The first big breakthrough for us came in 95 when we imported indigenous technology in terms of molds, machines, automation, and other technical know-how. Um, and uh, this led to, uh, you know, the product quality getting significant improvement and widespread acceptance compared to the first few years of struggle. Building on this momentum, we started our first state-of-the-art manufacturing plant in 2002 to manufacture uh, certified bottles and carboys. Now, this was not only the first uh, manufacturer in India, but one of the few to do so in the world. This gave us instant recognition, boosted our brand image. We were looked at a as a serious threat to the global multinational dominance across five to six decades in India. Strength of this um, and the overwhelming feedback led to another facility in 2006 for molecular biology consumables, fully automated facility. Um, uh, 2007 led us to the international business completely by default. Uh, 2012, uh, we set up another manufacturing facility to cater to um, you know, growing demands both internationally and domestically. In 2018, uh, Clear Vision Holdings, which is our current private equity partner, ADV Partners, made a significant minority investment in the company, the first by an, uh, somebody outside the family. And as we stand in 2021, we've acquired five acres of land uh, in Pachla, again, a district in West Bengal, uh, where we have started the construction. Construction is underway since the last three months to develop a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility, pure manufacturing facility. And we've acquired another six acre of land, uh, which where construction is yet to begin, which starts next month, which is going to be a state-of-the-art distribution and fulfillment center for customers across the globe and India's first radiation plant, the first by a labware manufacturer completely for its captive consumption. Next slide, please. These are some of the key products uh, in the consumable segment. Uh, uh, as you can see, there goes uh, may look like simple pieces of plastic. It goes a, a great deal of engineering to build the perfect product to in, uh, ensure that uh, there's a flash-free orifice, a well-engineered cone which fits a multitude of pipettes, or a well-engineered cap to ensure that there is no leakage, not for standard liquids, but harsh reagents and solvents at a variety of pressures and temperatures. It could go as high as 196 degrees C in terms of uh, cold temperatures or 80 degrees C in terms of hot temperatures, and it must maintain the leak proofness. To put it simply, it could be a very inexpensive piece of plastic holding a very, very expensive chemical or reagent, which makes uh, the quality of the plastic all the more critical and makes the product all the more sticky. Next slide, please. Uh, and reusables, our marquee products are certified range of bottles, carboys, beakers, and cylinders. As I said, we were this put us into instant recognition with our first state-of-the-art facility. We are one of the few manufacturers globally and probably the only in India to have this range of product line. Uh, and this is open doors for us all over the world and continues to be one of our strong product selling, uh, strong selling products. In benchtop equipment, it's a product filler. It's more like uh, adding so that once well, the customer gets a one-stop solution, then they buy products from Tarsons. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. This is the overview of uh, how the global and the Indian market is poised in 2020 and how it's slated to grow over the next five years. We expect positive growth momentum both in India and globally because the world has gone through unprecedented times where the world was taken by surprise in its healthcare infrastructure. We were not prepared as a globe as, a, as well as a country to handle a pandemic of such man magnitude. So investment has poured all over the world, uh, as specifically in India as well, through the public and private sectors. And such boosts uh, in healthcare infrastructure directly benefit companies like us, which are at the forefront of supplying such sectors. Uh, 
a number of international pharmaceutical companies have been outsourcing their R&D activities and clinical trials to CROs in India. CROs being an important customer of a company like ours, we stand to directly benefit from the same. So an overall positive, uh, uh, you know, uh, sentiment on the healthcare testing research segments gives Starsons a very, very strong positioning and footing moving forward over the next three to five years. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide talks about the entire global revenue of lab plastics divided among key customer segments. An important point to notice out here is the purple shaded slide on the left, which is 41% PCR and cell and tissue cultures currently something what we don't do. So technically our revenues come from 59% of the global plastic labware market. Uh, adding these 41% product lines of PCR and cell and tissue culture put us in a very formidable position, not only in India, as well as internationally. PCR is currently planned in our existing facilities and cell and tissue culture in the new upcoming facility. For end-use customers, we have a strong and growing presence across all customer segments in India as well as internationally. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide talks about the rapid shift from glassware to plasticware. I wouldn't completely agree with this point. Glass is very strong in certain industries such as chemical industries where high degree of heating and harsh solvents are required. And I believe glass will continue to remain strong in such industries and they would not be able to replace it by plastic. Plastic is very strong in industries such as biotech, biopharma, testing, research, healthcare, where you require products to be uh, molded to very fine tolerances, having wall thicknesses of lower than 0.15 mm, and uh, have billions of parts be produced with uh, purity conditions such as DNAs, RNAs, endotoxin free. In such places, glass will not be able to replace plastic. So the only positive for the plasticware industry is that these industries are growing at a much rapid pace compared to industries where glass is prevalent. Hence, the, uh, these industries should form a majority part of the overall scientific wear market, hence giving extra market share or a dominant market share to plastic over glass. Next slide, please. This shows how the various product categories which we are today present in the first two, in the first two uh, boxes of how they are moving in the next five years and in the very important, the new product like PCR cell culture and how it's slated to move over the next five years. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so the key strengths of the company, I believe the single biggest strength of the company is its brand equity, brand image, what it has in the minds of the Indian scientific research community. I could go as far as to say that laboratory plasticware in India is synonymous as well as Starsons. There are various manufacturers manufacturing good quality products, but what sets us apart from most of our competition domestically is uh, quality products consistently and reliably over decades. So most manufacturers fail over long periods of time, and this is where we've been able to score uh, and have a very, very strong brand which the scientific research community of India trusts and which form, puts us in a very elite group of select brands all over the world. And all this uh, strength is attributed to our people who have uh, supported us throughout and ensured that every vertical, every corner and every uh, area of the company is well covered. Next slide, please. And we also believe that our strong distribution network of about 141 distributors have played a critical role in ensuring that we have one of the strongest and highest penetrated reach in the country in comparison to multinational players as well as uh, domestic competition. And various sub-brands like Spinwin, Cryochill, MaxiAmp, MaxiPens have become so popular in India that they're almost synonymous to the product categories they represent in the Indian scientific research community. Next slide, please. This slide talks about uh, the revenue distribution between the three segments. We expect consumables to go up uh, from the 61.5% because most of our existing product capacity expansions and new products are centered around consumables. Reusables might drop in percentage, but in volumes will continue to grow robustly with bottles, carboys occupying a large portion of the business in the biotech, biopharma space. Others is currently not our focus as described earlier. We could probably look into it in the next uh, three to five year period. Next slide, please. This slide shows our new facility and the magnitude of this facility. As you can see, 21,550 square meters, bigger than anything put together, what we've had since inception, which puts us in a very formidable position for future growth spread over the next three to five years. All our facilities with consumables are fully automated using state-of-the-art robotics, right from material insertion to final product before packaging, manufactured in aseptic areas or certified class ISO 7 and class ISO 8 team rooms, which are third-party validated and not validated by internal quality systems. We have the necessary certification to conduct business both in India as well as internationally. Next slide, please. 
These are some of our customers spread across uh, the domestic customer base. An important point to note out here is 100% of the business conducted in India, which is two thirds of our business, is goes through Tarsen's brand only. And in international, which is one third of our brand, 60% goes through an ODM or white label channel, and 40% goes through the Tarsen's brand. So effectively, on a whole level basis, 80% of our revenue comes from our brand, and 20% of our revenue comes from ODM or white label channels. Next slide, please. This shows on the right that today at 62% is our ODM for international business and 38% is our branded share for international business. This has grown very robustly from 99% ODM and 1% branded over a 10 year period and it's slated to touch 50% each over the next three to five years. On the left, you will see the distribution reach and our distribution channel all over the country. Being a company from the East, we are quite, uh, uh, you know, many people uh, are of the belief that most of our revenue is centered in and around the Eastern part of the country. Contrary to that belief, most of our revenue comes from the South and the West of the country, followed by the North and the East. This is because of the geographical concentration of biotech, biopharma research customers in these parts of the country and very little presence in the north and the east for these product lines. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the financial slide and I would request our CFO, Mr. Santosh Agarwal, to take you over this slide. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. So just a small summary of the financial slide. Company has grown across history with a CAGR of 14% since FY15 on the back of export growth of 20% and domestic growth of 12%. We have seen increase in sales over the year on the back of increase in demand of consumables. The uh, company is highly focused to maintain the gross margin of more than 73%. Uh, in FI21, we have reported gross margin of 73%, which actually translates this into it into EBITDA margin of uh, 46%, EBITDA margin of 39%, PAT margin of 29%, ROC of 34%, average ROE of 31%. Company has delivered this kind of robust performance on the back of efficient use of raw materials, reduced scraps, higher automation, leverage, and leverage on operating and distribution overheads. Company is, uh, company is very much hopeful to continue this kind of momentum in future on the back of increase in expectation of increase in sales of sterilized product sales and highly value added product sales. For example, in Q1 FY22. Uh, if we compare Q1 FY22 number with FY21 number, then we can observe that the gross margin has been increased by more than 800 basis points. EBITDA has been increased by more than 600 basis points. PAT increased by more than 500 basis points. ROC increased by more than 300 basis points. Average ROE has been increased by more than 700 basis points. So this gives us, us uh, confidence that we can continue this kind of growth in future as well. Next slide, please. So I, uh, I would like to introduce ourselves since we didn't do it in the first slide. Uh, so Sanjeev Segal, as I told you, he's the founder, chairman, and managing director of the company. Been with the company since inception and really looks after projects, new projects in manufacturing and new developments in the company. I'm Rohan Segal, been with the company since 2010. Uh, did my education uh, uh, in uh, Calcutta and then went did a degree in finance and accounting for the UK. Today I look after... Uh, sales, marketing, and business development activities of the company. And we have with us Mr. Santosh Agarwal, who's the chief financial officer of the company, has 20 years of rich experience, been with us for two years. Prior to that, was the CFO of a European MNC in India. Uh, on the board, we have my, I have myself and Sanjeev, along with uh, Gaurav, company director from the investment arm of uh, ADB Partners. And we have a very robust and strong independent director board, starting with Girish Vanwari, very strong name in tax. Today, founded Transaction Square a couple of years ago and has been a prominent name heading tax at a big four company for the longest period before Transaction Square. Suchilita so Basu, very strong and prominent name in law all across the country, was an ex-partner of a big law firm in the country before she co-founded Aquilaw. And Vire Shobroy, very, very strong name from Tata, spent most of his career with Tata, co-founded M-Junction, which was an initiative with Tata. Today, a very strong member of the CIA circles. PricewaterhouseCoopers has been our statutory auditor for the last three years. And this year, we have appointed Grant Thornton as our internal auditor. Next slide, please. This is, uh, okay. Uh, so these are the key business strategies. Uh, of the company moving forward to uh, achieve, uh, you know, uh, robust growth. Uh, we believe strengthening our existing product portfolios. There are certain product portfolios what we have currently where we do not have enough capacity to meet demands. 
growing these uh, demands in these existing product portfolios will help us gain a uh, deeper market share in india as well as uh, increase our presence in more countries internationally as well as uh, supply uh, a larger range of products internationally and increase our revenue uh, having new product lines such as pcr and cell culture puts us in a formidable position because we already have leveraged our strong brand and will use the same distribution network and as supply to the same customers it's all about building these product lines at the right quality levels to ensure a much larger buy and much larger uh, share with these existing customers and increase our market share significantly in india increase our presence in international markets now we do business internationally through a two prong approach one is uh, the private label to odm in select countries of western europe and us and canada here we continue uh, we have built our reputation as a supplier for the last 10 to 12 years now is the time the inflection point to go to the next level by adding new products increasing our wallet share and also capitalize on the china plus one strategy which is going gaining great importance because of ease of doing business with india and the right duty structures of importing products from india puts us in a very very strong position once again and in the branded countries to grow from 35 countries to about 80 to 100 countries over the next 5 to 7 years will put us in another strong position in the branded side in the international business we believe we have a strong balance sheet with formidable uh, numbers and uh, strong profitability but taking advantage of economies of scale further as we grow our size and scale of the company in the next 3 to 5 years will help us develop better returns to our stakeholders and we already have next slide please next slide please so this is the key points in a nutshell what we have discussed in today's presentation once again we thank you for your time today and uh, thank you so much Thank you so much, sir. We'll now open the floor for the Q and A session. Uh, while we have already received some questions, I will be taking those questions first. A uh, gentle reminder to all to kindly post your respective questions in the Q and A panel available, and we will try our best to ensure that all questions are answered. Coming to the first question, uh, could you tell us what is the unique selling proposition for Tarsens, especially in the context of the unorganized and comparatively smaller players so uh, the unorganized segment is a very very small portion of the market i believe that it would be less than uh, 10% of the market our main uh, competing points are with uh, established uh, domestic man manufacturers and brands and multinational companies and our unique selling point would be having the right products the quality products having uh, very very strong customer relationships having a very very strong brand and the biggest uh, of all having consistent reliable quality which most brands fail to achieve in the country thank you sir uh, so uh, given the leadership position in our segment uh, we see a growth rate of uh, 8 to 9% since fy17 uh, if you could throw some light on that also if uh, you could share any outlook uh, given the huge expansion that is planned sure so uh, 8 to 9% is because of one uh, fiscal year in the middle where uh, growth was limited um, where we did not grow uh, but overall if you see from a 5 year period we've grown at a 14% cago over a 10 year period we've grown close to an 18% cago so there's been healthy growth but the market has been expanding and we see uh, the market really opening up and a lot of emphasis on healthcare testing research not only in india but all over the world and as i said earlier we stand to be at the forefront of benefiting from this research in india as well as from a growing presence internationally for the expansion which is planned uh, we will use the proceeds about 65 odd crores from uh, our proceeds in the ipo to fund our capex plans to fund our construction plans and uh, our new facility and the rest of the capex plan will be taken care by our internal approvals uh, uh, from uh, you know our internal profitability over the next 2 to 3 years sir so, uh, could you uh, throw some light on what the promoter holding would be post the ipo uh, i have not done an identical calculation but at the moment we stand at 50.75% pre uh, ipo post issue will be somewhere between 47 to 47.5% there's a significant uh, uh, there's a very very non significant drop because of uh, a natural dilution on raising ipo proceeds and a very very negligible offer for sale by the promoters thank you uh, so which segment from your products 
uh, do you expect to have to see the highest growth and the reasons for that? Sure. So uh, we believe that there's a tremendous, uh, you know, growth in the pharma space. Um, you know, Indian uh, India is turning out to be the biggest global pharma hub, and uh, you know, there's a lot of growth in that sector. India, I believe, is going to be the next big thing when it comes to research uh, because uh, we are not up there with various other developed countries in terms of research budgets. But uh, we believe that a lot of focus has been put on the research budgets in the country. So research uh, and uh, innovation would play a major role in India uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, you know, a lot of emphasis has been developed given on health. So we believe that the healthcare, the testing, the diagnostic hospital side. Would also experience a massive growth so overall there are such a positive momentum all across different verticals of the industry it's very difficult as a company to point in point on one side we are prepared to uh, because our products are common all, all across these verticals we are preparing ourselves for very very robust growth in the industry and we want to be at the forefront to take advantage of such growth levels thank you sir uh, sir, could you throw some light on the current market share that we have in India and also the last uh, five years CAGR growth? Last five years CAGR growth in India, uh, I do not have the identical, but as a company, we are at 14%. I don't have it at the back of my head. What is India only? Uh, and what was the next part of the question? Can you just repeat the things? About regarding the market share that we have in India. So, Indian market today is 12 billion rupees, out of which Tarsons is 1.5 billion rupees. And that is 1.5 billion on 12 billion for the overall market. But the participating market of Tarsons is about 6 to 6.5 billion rupees. And we are 1.5 billion out of that. So that puts us around 23 to 25% of market share in our participating market. Today, 41% of the market or 41% of 12 billion comes from cell culture and PCR technologies, something which we are currently under development. And uh, we have already successfully launched a few areas of PCR over the last uh, few months. And we plan to launch the next few areas of PCR over the next few months in this fiscal year. And cell culture will be developed over the next two, two and a half years, which gives us complete access to 100% of the market. Thank you, sir. So we see a majority of our revenues uh, coming from uh, South and West India. Uh, could you throw some right. light on the business plans in the other parts of the country as well as uh, if we are planning on setting up any manufacturing facilities in the southern western regions so the good part about tarsins is as a as a market share we are quite constant all across the country unfortunately certain areas of the country have a higher geographical concentration of certain customers so unless more biotech, biopharma centers open up in north and east part of India south and west will continue to lead the way because of higher geographical presence of customers. So in terms of market share, we are very, very strong in East and North, but uh, we are supporting the amount of customers that are there. So in whole number figures, it is very difficult for East and North to match South and West unless the infrastructure in these parts of the country grow at the level it is grown in South and West. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're doing a significant uh, capex. Uh, can you explain the rationale and the benefits of that? Uh, the benefits uh, and the rationale for us, uh, for the capex is we are building up a product line, which is PCR and cell culture technologies. There has been accelerated growth, not only in India, but internationally. This has always been in our radar, but uh, considering uh, dependency not only on India, as well as 40 countries all over the world and us growing our company size to where it is today, puts us in a very comfortable position to undertake uh, this capex for the PCR and cell culture technologies over the next few years. Probably a few years ago, the company size was smaller and the markets uh, in India were also smaller and we were limited to just the Indian market and not the international markets probably 10 years back. So growth in the international markets, dependency on not one country and various countries gives us the confidence to move into these two product lines for which we have the technology and we're very, very confident of very, very strong growth. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, could you throw some light on what would be the price differential uh, between your products and an MNC like uh, Thermo Fisher and what differentiates you from them? Uh, it's about 15 to 20 percent on an average. In some cases, it could come very, very low or close by. In some cases, it could go higher. But what differentiates us is uh, 
uh, we are uh, we are probably the most preferred choice for laboratory plastic wear in india because of combination of customer care closeness to the customer in terms of delivering products at, uh, on time being a very very reliable product not only in terms of quality but in terms of supply and uh, you know having uh, a wide range of products always available for the customer many times multinationals may not have uh, the same level of customer care what uh, you know a uh, smaller brand like tarsons would have and we capitalize on that along with our very very robust uh, quality and performance and uh, this is how we've been able to gain market share from multinationals successfully over the last two to two and a half decades thank you sir uh so the next question is uh, would your working capital management uh, improve further going ahead the current receivable days is 74 days in fy21 uh, do you see any further reduction in that i would ask uh, our cfo mr santosh agarwal to ask answer this question our currently our working capital cycle is uh, 135 days on fy21 now we get it down to 122 122 days in q1 fy22 the we have done lot of brainstorming in the inventory part and the uh, receivable part currently uh, domestic domestic uh, receivables are coming in 45 to 65 days and export receivables are coming in the range of 45 to 90 days because of the transit time so we have done lot of brainstorming in the receivable used for 90 to 192 days we get it down to 122 days and apart from that from the payable side we have we need to pay upfront cash in advance to import the raw materials from europe and singapore kind of country right so these metal raw materials are coming from the fortune 500 companies and we need to pay upfront cash so we don't see uh, much improvement in this side considering our scale but in future if we scale we can demand the credit period from this uh, from this supplier so in the short term we expect the working capital cycle in the range of 135 to 145 days although we have done the improvement till 122 days but we on a conservative side we prefer that we think that the working capital cycle will range from 135 to 145 day days in the short run but in the long run we can do the improvement further so just to add to santosh uh, what i believe is that our country as uh, india does not manufacture specialized grades for medical applications of raw material we are reliant on other countries for import and we have to pay in advance in cash which is the industry norm and not nothing which is related only to darsons and we cannot brands have local sourcing which other countries like europe and us have uh, the working cycle capital the working capital cycle remain elongated because you're uh, accounting for 50 60 days of shipment and paying in advance in cash and one more thing to add if you compare our working capital cycle with the other industry peers we are way ahead Uh, in compared to other industry peers they are they, they have a working capital cycle in the range of 200 to 280 days but we are currently we are reporting 122 122 days and this is for like for like company yeah because of course the thermo fisher scientifics of the world in the us have a lower working capital cycle because they source raw materials from uh, you know their own country which delivers in 4 to 5 days as compared to ours 50 to 60 days thank you thank you sir So, uh, sir, there are a couple of questions with regards to the competitions. So, I'll just club them uh, together. Uh, could you uh, throw some light on who are the prominent global competitors to your to your shop? And also, if you could uh, reiterate the op the opportunity size sure. for the market and what is your market in India? Sure. So, uh, the premium uh, the uh, competition globally in India it is Thermo. uh it is corning it is epend of these three are major competitors but globally there is a strong presence of other family owned german companies like griner like sarstedt and various family owned uh, us companies as well which are not so prevalent in the indian marketplace but globally we compete with them uh the market share for us as i explained is 25% on our addressable market today but on the whole market we are about 12 to 13% slated to grow to uh, a larger share as we have the whole market under uh, you know under our radar and uh, was there any question which i'm missing out as well okay the growth size of the industry internationally i think yeah, internationally we don't have a meaningful market in terms of percentage but we have a meaningful business in terms of whole numbers we are one third of our revenue comes from uh, international business but the international business today is about 50000 crores 
So at 75, 80 crores or 50,000 crores doesn't put a meaningful market share in terms of uh, calculation. But for us, 0 to 80 crores has been a great journey over the last 10 years and we expect to grow this robustly over the next 5, 10 years as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is, uh, what are the key raw materials used during manufacturing? And are we facing any challenges from an increase in the price of raw materials, especially of plastic? Sure. Uh, the key raw materials used are polypropylene, polyethylene and polystyrene. Uh, these are specialized grades for medical use. They are not commodity grades and already available at a huge premium for commodity grades. So they are not crude oil based. Uh, they are more uh, on a demand and supply base. And generally the raw materials are very stable and we maintain uh, our pricing on a financial year and don't change in the middle of the year unless a one-off year like the last year where shipping costs uh, globally have gone to another level and uh, the huge demand and healthcare all across the world has led to supply uh, demand being more than supply so pricing uh, pricing of raw materials have risen but the price rise is not normal and hence is, has to be passed on to the customer which most of the industry including Tarsons has done. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next question, uh, do you plan to be debt-free post the IPO? Absolutely. So uh, a, a significant portion of uh, this proceeds is being used to repay uh, the debt back. So at the uh, post-listing, uh, we would have uh, zero negligible debt. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, could you also talk more about the new facility planned in Panchala and what kind of products and peak revenues we can make from that facility? So, uh, in terms of revenue, at this moment, we are putting in an investment of uh, whatever is mentioned in the DRHP on the infrastructure and building up of that facility. Uh, generally, we will expect revenues in the, uh, to the tune of uh, the gross which asset turnover we currently have. And it should go in the same trend of about 0 0.85 to 0 0.90 levels. And in the new facility, we can expect new product lines like cell culture, as well as capacity expansions of certain key product lines, such as cryogenic, centrifuge and liquid handling. Thank you, sir. So if you could also throw some light on the current uh, capacity utilization. So we have around 60 to 65 uh, machines spread across different technologies and about 600 to 700 molds along with uh, automation systems. Uh, we are not uh, one product company. For example, we are not a manufacturer of uh, two wheelers or four wheelers where we can identify that we can manufacture these many number of units per month. It's such a complicated permutation and combination of 1700 SKUs spread over 65 machines, spread over 700 molds. To reach a very uh, correct capacity is next to impossible. It can vary from uh, year to year. For example, I could sell 1 billion units this year and have a revenue of 2.4 billion rupees. And next year, I could sell 0 0.8 billion units and have a revenue of 3 billion rupees. So I could reduce my uh, SKU uh, output uh, to, I could reduce my output from 1 billion to 0 0.8 billion, but my revenue could increase from um, uh, 2.4 billion to 3 billion because our products range from 25 pesa and cost to 15,000 rupees. So such a large variation with such complicated manufacturing uh, uh, leads to no one right answer as to what is our capacity. Thank you, sir. So we see that Tarsons enjoys good margins. Uh, are these in line with global and domestic peers? And are these margins sustainable in the medium term? Or has uh, the COVID scenario been positive or negative on this? So uh, compared to global peers, I would say they are lower than us, but uh, the range at which they are, for example, one of the biggest global players might have 30, 32 billion dollars in revenue with 32 percent EBITDA, uh, you know, at those levels, having many facilities across 25 countries, having more than 250,000 people work for them and having subsidiaries in more than 60 countries to achieve that sort of a EBITDA is truly phenomenal. And uh, we believe that based on our scale, being present only in one state of the country and operating from here to the rest of the country and all over the world could, uh, justifies our uh, margin level as compared to much larger uh, scales of these uh, MNCs. But in terms of uh, domestic manufacturing, we enjoy 
much superior margin to our domestic manufacturer uh, to domestic competitors because of our uh, superior know how in terms of technology superior know how in terms of manufacturing techniques practices these manually manufacturing techniques and a lot of know how in terms of productivity and output which puts us at a uh, much more superior position to our domestic competition we believe we are much ahead of them in terms of know how and technology and uh, that's what sets us apart as well thank you sir uh would we, would we be coming up with any products in the pcr and cell culture segment yes uh, we would be coming up with uh, pcr in fact a few lines of pcr have already been developed and be- begun to commercialize over these quarters in fy22 and new product lines are supposed to be slated to enter in q3 q4 of fy22 um cell culture would, uh, requires much larger scale we do not have the infrastructure infrastructure has been currently developed in the new facility and it will be launched out there Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is: uh, Is there any customer lock-in or switching cost for a customer, or a typical customer can change a vendor any time without any issues? How does that work? See, there is no uh, lock-in in terms of contracts, but um, uh, you can find a customer who is undertaking uh, using tubes or piper tips from uh, from Brand X, which is his uh, preferred brand, and he's conducting research which costs him thousands of times of the cost of purchasing the plastic and costs him and his team time which could spread over a year six months two years and for a for saving 10% of 15% cost he might move to another brand which could uh, spoil his research and cause damage to in terms of time as well as resources as well as cost to an extent far greater than cheaper plastics so eventually this industry is very sticky and prefers to rely on brands which they can trust on fortunately tarsons falls at the top line of uh, these brands in the country thank you sir uh, sir could you throw some light on the split uh, between plastic ware and glass ware products currently it's almost equal uh, in india we believe internationally it's a much greater share to plastic ware uh, and uh, we expect it to uh, grow significantly uh, over the next 4 to 5 years and reach somewhere close to 2/3 uh, one third or higher in favor of plastics thank you so much uh sir could you also please comment on the geographical and political risks associated with all- all facilities of the company are uh, being situated in one region so in terms of geographical risk we don't see any risk we see a lot of advantages because most of our people technology and know how lies uh, in this part of uh, the country we are tightly knit company spent a lot of time developing uh, this know how to achieve this leadership position and we don't want to dilute it by having uh, facilities spread all across the country however as we grow in scale and size if we need uh, to expand and have a, a facility of similar products and scale up and have identical facilities to what we have in uh, calcutta we may look at other geographical regions but considering our very negligible freight costs all across the country we have uh, uh, you know been able to ensure that business uh, is conducted very very profitably and very reliably all over the country uh, having a very robust network of distribution partners who have ensured that tarsons stock is available at any point of time for all its key critical customers medium small or large uh, you know whenever they need it thank you sir uh, how strong is the market recall for tarsons as a brand and uh, how much role will it play in the success of tarsons going forward i think uh, the st- strong recall of the tarsons brand is evident or prevalent from uh, what we have been able to achieve over the last 2 to 2 and a half decades we practically come into a into a no entry zone which was uh, you know dominated by multinationals and there was no place for indian manufacturers there, there were only french players in india and we showed the way of how you can come into this market and compete with multinational players so uh, this entire journey speaks for uh, the strong brand recall of tarsons and we expect to continue this growth moving forward not only in india but uh, also keep establishing our strong and growing presence internationally as well in the hospital sector uh, do you see yourself competing with the likes of uh, polymedicure 
Uh, no, we don't see ourselves competing with the likes of Polymedicure because companies like Polymedicure are more into IVF cannulas or uh, products related to the patient directly. It could be blood collection tubes, it could be syringes, it could be IVF cannulas. We are more related to the research part. So once the patient has uh, been injected with a syringe and his blood is taken in a blood collection tube to the laboratory to test whether he's got a particular problem which he's been tested for, it is in that laboratory of the hospital that our plastics are used. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next question uh, is uh, with regards to the EBITDA margin. Uh, it says that the EBITDA margin is currently uh, 53% as of Q1 FY22. Uh, right. How do you uh, see that uh, going forward? We believe that uh, uh, the EBITDA margins are fairly sustainable uh, on the uh, Q uh, on the full year FI21 and Q1 FI22, you know, in that region of uh, somewhere in the 50% range is uh, very, very sustainable moving ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, so then we have a couple of questions with regards to the price uh, of the issue. So I would request if someone to take up uh, that question. Sure. Bankers to uh, take that up on uh, our behalf, please. Yeah, hi. So I think uh, there has been a question around uh, the pricing of the issue. Uh, so see, one as a as a rule, we are not allowed to make any forward-looking statements. But uh, I think pricing is, you know, we followed the standard procedure of uh, you know going out, meeting with investors, doing extensive marketing. Uh, and uh, whatever price band you currently see is the you know is the is the is the result of is that is the result of that where book building you know this has been based on uh, some serious feedback that has come from all investors uh, and uh, that's that's how you see the price band uh, so this is basis this is this is basis their feedback uh, you know based on their understanding of the company and how they see the growth outlook uh, so that that is that is one data point that I wanted to share. And two is I also want to again just stress upon the high margins that the company makes as well as the high return ratios that the company's been you know uh, you know reflecting over the years uh, and and compare that to some of the you know there is no real uh, immediate peer which is comparable in India uh, you know from a from a pure comparison point of view uh, but uh, uh, and therefore there is you know we we can't really give a peer set even our DRHP doesn't have any peer set mentioned for that reason. But uh, pricing is based on uh, you know feedback, and uh, if I uh, you know look at uh, uh, again what is given is only historical numbers. Uh, so uh, uh, you know we, we have to you know factor in the growth that the company will kind of uh, see, and that is I think what uh, the investors are kind of factored in. If if any of the other banks would like to add Deepak or uh, Samit. Like uh, Satin mentioned, uh, pricing has been decided post uh, running exhaustive roadshows, uh, as is the norm in you know Indian IPOs. Thank you. And uh, just to add, there has been a very very good um, uh, uh, you know feedback which we have received from all the marquee, both global and domestic investors, and which will be reflected very soon on Friday once you look at the anchor. So uh, you know, just to add to that, so. It's basically based on the detailed feedback, uh, based on 100 plus meetings of institutional investors, both domestic and global. And uh, they have definitely perceived Asans as a very uh, youth, unique uh, branded play on the uh, you know diagnostics and healthcare and the kind of growth opportunity, which uh, tremendous opportunity, which the sector offers. And also the current uh, growth rates and uh, going forward, uh, the recent performance has also been factored in. So I hope, uh, you know, all cumulatively uh, will give you a sense on where the pricing is. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, coming to the next question, uh, could you throw some light on uh, how much uh, did uh, COVID uh, benefit you in the FY21? So while we don't sell our products directly to the end customer, we sell through distribution. Uh, we don't have an accurate number, but we believe about 20% of the revenues came directly from uh, COVID benefits uh, during the COVID periods of lockdown one and two. Uh, 
Uh, an important point to notice out here or note out here is that the amount of revenue we lost from customers such as academia, research, pharma, CROs, and biotech because of uh, partial or complete uh, close down of these customers during the COVID period, which would be equal or exceed the gain. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, could you throw some light on who influences the buying decision of which brand to use? Uh, will it be the doctor, the researcher, or the hospital or the company? Uh, who exactly is your uh, customer? I mean, it's the user. Uh, you know, uh, while it's rooted through commercial channels, uh, through purchase orders, but the user always has the final say. Thank you, sir. Uh, and sir, uh, are there any intentions to increase the opportunity size by entering uh, adjacency outside the uh, lab? Where? We have uh, a huge, uh, you know, a huge forecast for expansion spread across multiple years beyond the three to five year period. And uh, this is what we know how to do the best. And we would like to leverage our strength uh, moving forward. And at this point, we do not find any bandwidth to look beyond the plastic lab space. I feel there's an ocean of growth awaiting us over the next few years. Thank you, sir. Uh, so uh, what will be the asset turn uh, from upcoming facilities and when will uh, they come on stream? Uh, also, if you could throw some light on your credit period average. Uh, uh, asset turns would be similar to our current asset turns of 0.85 to 0.90 times. Uh, it would take about uh, two years for the facility to come under uh, commercial uh, use. And uh, uh, on our credit periods, uh, we have, uh, you know, about 45 to 55 days approx average credit uh, lines from our domestic buyers and about 65 to 90 uh, days credit lines from our international buyers. The reason for the higher credit lines is the cost or uh, is the time of shipment. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we'll be taking the last uh, couple of questions for uh, this evening session. Uh, the next question uh, reads uh, from medium to long term, a three to five years perspective. Uh, what is the capacity growth that you can envisage and uh, any large capex that needs to be funded? Uh, no, I think uh, it's very difficult, as I said, to envisage capacity uh, right in the beginning of the call because of the complexity of the operations, what we are currently having. All I can say is that we are building up infrastructure for very, very large uh, growth in terms of product lines for the future, in terms of this new facility. And we uh, believe our internal accruals are sufficient to fund the same through the next few years. Thank you, sir. Uh, coming to the last question, uh, what is the technology and certification requirement for your manufacturing process? If you could throw some light on that, please. Uh, the certification requirement is uh, as such the standard ISO 9001, which is the management certification requirement, and ISO 13485, which is the medical grade certification requirement, both of which we have. Uh, technology requirements are very, very complicated and diverse and spread differently from products. Uh, you know, we have 1700 SKUs, and that's what makes things more and more complicated because no two products are alike, no two products are the same. I don't mean in the 1700 SKUs, but I mean in the 300 product groups that we have. And different products have their different challenges, different technology requirements. And for us to be able to master 80% of the products at a very, very high or top level and 20% products at a very, very good level puts us at a very, very strong position. And uh, this is what uh, is one of the key areas which differentiates us from the rest. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we were taking one last question. Uh, if you could throw some light on any specifics on the huge pack growth in uh, March of FY21. Sure. Can you just repeat the question, please? So if you could throw some light on any specifics on the huge pat growth in the March of 21. March of 21. See, the, uh, in FY20, we reported a pat of 22.5%. In FY21, we reported a pat of 39.4%. This pat has been increased because of increase in the, uh, increase in the EBITDA. And the increase in the, the, the more, uh, the, the increase in percentage of sales was more in compared to the increase in the percentage of expenses. So we have a leverage on the distribution and overhead expenses. That's the reason this has been reflected in the PAT. 
apart from that we also reduced the interest cost also right that is also reflected in the pat thank you so much sir uh, with that we come to the end of uh, the qna session for this evening i would now like to invite uh, mr sambit rat from sbi capital markets limited uh, to give the vote of thanks over to you sir uh, thank you on behalf of tarsons products limited i express my sincere gratitude to you for attending the annual meet of the company i would like to remind you that the company proposes to open its bid offer on monday november 15 2021 with an initial public offering of equity shares of face value rupees 2 each aggregating to rupees 1023 crores the price band is fixed from rupees 635 to rupees 662 per equity share the bid offers on wednesday november 21 bidders the minimum bid lot is 22 equity and in multiples of 22 equity share we request your overwhelming support for this issue on the main thank you so much uh, i would like to thank everyone for joining the virtual brokers and analyst meet of tarsus products limited uh, for the forthcoming public issue uh, please feel free to reach out to us for any further queries you could email us at tarsus@adfactorspr.com and we'll definitely do our best to revert to all your queries within 48 hours Uh, we look forward to your support in making this ipo a grand success uh, thank you all once again take care and stay safe thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you everyone